we welcome all viewers of our channel Israel with Paul and Laura. This story is dedicated to the Jordan River. We will pass along its course from the place of baptism at the mouth of the river that flows into the Dead Sea to the source of the river at the foot of Mount Hermon. Today we drive from Jerusalem to the Sea of Galilee. Have a nice viewing. Good afternoon, dear friends. Greetings! From road number one, we are traveling from Jerusalem to Galilee now. We decided to make a trip with my wife to Galilee and visit the site of the Baptist of the Lord on the Jordan River along the way. On the way, the majestic mountains of the Judean desert, which at first glance seem completely uninhabited, draw special attention to themselves. I decided to stop for a moment in the Judean desert. Behind me you see a stunning object, right in the distance, behind the hill, here are such white domes. This place is called Nebemusa the alleged burial place of the Prophet Moses among Muslims. This tradition was discontinued by the British in the 20th century, when a religious procession were going from here to Jerusalem. Muslims believe that the Prophet Musa, from the point of view of the tradition of Islam, is buried here. But it is it noteworthy that Alexei Dmitrievsky, a well-known specialist in the history of Byzantium, wrote about the same place in the Judean desert, where in amazing views of the desert open, where the tribe of Judah lived in the Bible period. He believed that at the place where Muslims review the grave of the Prophet Moses, Nebi Musa, the monk Euthamius the Great, one of the founders of monasticism in the Judean desert was buried. All these lifeless mountains that you see seem so only at first glance. In fact, periodically they are filled with water especially in winter, they so-called wadis, in Arabic riverbeds. So the monks used these wadis from the period of Hariton the Confessor to his disciples Theoctis and Euphemius the Great. Up to 25,000 monks settled here, and then all the Judean desert was called the desert of the holy city of Jerusalem. We are going further, notice the fleshy numbers. These numbers indicate the level of our location in relation to the oceans. Jerusalem is located at an altitude of over 700 meters above sea level, and we are already at the level of 300, almost having complete a general descent of 1000 meters. With such a descent, he seriously lays his ears, which is almost always surprised by my sightseers. We approach the strategic intersection of the 1st and 19th roads. The 19th road we are turning to is longest in Israel, from the far north to the far south. We drive north. Golden domes in an oasis in the middle of the desert is a hospitable monastery of the monk Gerasim of Jordan, on the first ascetic monks in the desert of the holy city. We turned of the main road towards the Jordan towards the place of baptism. Before us is the Orthodox monastery of St. John the Baptist of the Jerusalem Greek Patriarchate. It is from here that the procession to the Jordan River begins on Epiphany Eve. For a long time it was possible to get here only two times a year, the beginnings of Holy Week and the holiday of Epiphany itself. The question is why? The fact is that this holy place fell into a close border military zone, and the river itself is a natural border between Jordan and Israel. Since 2008, this place has been declared a national park and have become publicly available. Although there are still not clear territories, and a large number of such signs warn us about this. In the park complex we were the only visitors. We very much expected to see the deep Jordan, since this winter was very plentiful on rains. On the feast of the Epiphany, the water level rose to the stairs, flooding the usual approach to the bathing place. 
Here, look specifically for you part of the video shot January 19 this year. But what we saw shocked us. We found the Jordan River to be honest a little shocked. As far as you can see, look, there is very little water. However, the flow of water is a little. What is the, the reason for this? Hard to tell. Maybe the dam of the Gene Dam in the Galilee was blocked. Or something else. It seems that now some sort of cleaning work is going on. But there is practically no normal access to water. You can barely reach. Well, I still managed to touch the sacred waters of the Jordan River. Even Washington is a happy person to arrive at the true place of baptism. The course is clearly visible. Look, the current is strong enough, so the flow of the water is still going on. But the conditions is honestly deplorable. And here the camera of my iPhone for the first time showed me such a picture, completely disconnected and a spiritually request cooling. As it turned out, the air temperature reached 47 degrees Celsius. Theoretically, I could cross the river without difficulty and end up in another country. Shaken by the state of the river and the place of Epiphany, but still joyful that they touch its sacred waters, we continued our journey to the north, towards the Sea of Galilee. For about two hours we drove along the Jordan Valley, and to our eyes, in addition to that other place, an infinite number of dead palm plantations, greenhouses, fields, with various agricultural crops were revealed. While traveling in the Jordan Valley, we set our temperature record. Guys, plus 49 degrees Celsius, I had to get out of the car and check what are all the sensations in the Judean desert and the Jordan Valley. Palm trees it all the weather and the same goes, the head is on fire and the legs are in water and they grow while the temperatures from plus 49 to plus 53 degrees Celsius. But here I will tell you a sensation are so directly optimistic. Plus 49 degrees Celsius. Here it is. We are going further. The landscape is strikingly changing and the closer to Sea of Galilee, the richer and richer its green shades. The color palette of nature becomes bright and varied. Having traveled some 100 kilometers to the north, we see a completely different Jordan. You look, this is a place where the waters of the Jordan River and the Sea of Galilee come from. Then they reach the Dganya Dam, and then they are further discharged along their way to the Sea of Salt. This is the name of the Dead Sea in the Bible. Oh, try the water. Oh, what a warm and soft water. These figures indicate the water level in the Sea of Galilee, which is actually a lake with the fresh water. The level of this year significantly exceeded the previous ones and reached the mark of 209 meters and around minus 204. The lake overflows the coast on the threatens flooding. The dump excess water and regulate the water level in the lake that Ghania Dam was built. After the Dgenia Dam, the waters of Jordan fell into a place known as Yardenit. It was equipped in 1981 with the forts of the Kibbutz Kinneret. Before the opening of this place of Epiphany in 2008, remember at the beginning of the plot we visited, not far from the Dead Sea, the waters of the Jordan flow into it. So only in Yardenit, numerous pilgrims and tourists could take ablutions, the number of which reaches 400,000 and year. This complex is valid to this day.
Our path continues along the northwestern shore of the Sea of Galilee, which is a unique natural pearl of the whole of Galilee. To be precise, this is a lake because its water are fresh. This famous lake has several names. The oldest is Yam Kinert, which in Hebrew means the Lute Sea, and also Lake Galilee, Lake Tiberias, and Lake Gennesaret, which devour from the ancient geographical names of this area. The area of the lakes reaches approximately 165 square kilometers, and the greatest depth reaches 45 meters. The length of the lake reaches up to 23 kilometers in length and up to 11 kilometers in width, and the length of the coastline, dependent of the water level, is from 55 to 60 kilometers. From the north, several small rivers flow into the lake, originating in the Golan Heights. The largest of these is the Jordan River. The Jordan gives the lake 400 million cubic meters of the water annually and then flows from the its southern part and continues on its way to the Dead Sea. And also, this is the lowest water reservoir on the Earth with fresh water. Its water level varies with rainfall and consumption. By midway 2020, the lake's water level reached 209 meters below sea level. On the several species of fish that live in this lake, the most famous is the tilapia of Galilee, or the fish of the Apostle Peter, which was included on the menu of local restaurants called Amnam Omusht, and is popular with locals and visiting pilgrims and tourists. In the Christian tradition, it is believed that this type of fish was caught by the Apostle Peter and found in it a coin called Stetir. The landscapes of the Sea of Galilee are endless and varied, but today it appeared to our eyes in such a grey haze. The fact is that the salty wind came, a hum scene with the fine dust, and he covered the beauty of the lake with a kind of veil. Nevertheless, we are here standing on the Mount of Beatitudes and also watching the beauties at a temperature of approximately plus 43-44 degrees Celsius. From this heat I convey my greetings to all my excursionists and pilgrims from the Holy Land of Galilee, and this favorite of all pilgrims of the Holy Land is a wonderful Bougainvillea. On this bright note we will end today's story. Paul was with you. Subscribe to our channel Israel with Paul and Laura. Click on the bell to be notified of new videos. Put likes, write comments. I, as a professional tourist guide, invite you on tours of Israel. The phone number is in the description of this film. All the best and see you again.